everybody, Jerry here with uh, 3DHP. Time for another printer video. Kaiwu 3D just sent me out their Tycoon Max to uh, fix, review, test. Now, the story on that is um, I haven't done a build video on it because basically, to put it together, you have four bolts and four plugs that goes together very quick. This was a return to Kaiwu from a customer here in the U.S. that had some issues. They sent it out to me to go ahead and fix it and then I could test it and review it and make a video on it or make multiple videos on it. And it's a very interesting machine. Some of my friends around on uh, YouTube have had the smaller version of this and they've tested it. They've been having a lot of great success. It's an unusual looking machine. It kind of reminds me like a, of an old record player from back in the day that folded up. Unfortunately, the bed on this does not fold up. It's solid. And it's got a lot of really cool features, a lot of good cool bells and whistles. Let me take a walk around the printer and we'll talk all about it. We'll go over to their website. I'll show you their website, where you can find these on Amazon. They're on Facebook. You know, it's real interesting. And uh, back to when I got this and I put it to, went to put it together, there was no instructions in the box because whoever mailed it back didn't ship it back with them. It wasn't hard to figure out. I had a few bolts and things here and there that were missing. Some of the bed screws on the aluminum plate were missing on it where they were unscrewed. I had to put them back in. And one of the couplers on it, it has dual Zs, and one of the couplers got stretched, so I had some laying around. I replaced both of them, that way they'd match in height and be exactly the same. But when they ship these out, the Z-axis should be strapped down. Now I'm not sure if it is when you get it brand new. It should be locked in place, that way these Z-couplers can't get stretched accidentally in shipping. So I got them replaced. And then I was auto-leveling the bed, I was probing the bed, everything was working perfectly fine. When I went to raise the Z, I noticed that it wouldn't raise. When I go to the touch screen, it wasn't raising on me, and I seen an error on the screen, and the hot end also would not heat up. What happened, the thermistor on the hot end was busted, and part of it was stuck in the block, so I had to get a real small screwdriver and kind of get in there by hand and dig all that out. I took a thermistor I had on hand, because I have lots of parts for printers. I replaced the thermistor, and it works like a champ. They just came out with new firmware on this, which has all the color buttons on it. They're all lit up in color. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's do a little walk around of it and uh, we'll move on. Okay, as you can see, it's got a nice colorful interface on the touch screen. And when things are heated up, then the buttons change colors accordingly. And as they cool down and get cold, then they go back to the state of blue. Um, on the touch screen, you, it's got a place where you can pop in all your files right here on the TFT touch screen. Put everything in. It has another SD card slot up here and then another micro SD where you can plug into your computer. It's an all metal case. Everything is all metal. Power switch here on the back. A selector switch for your region of the world whether it be 110 or 220. It has dual lead screws that are very nice on both sides with any backlash nuts. And another nice feature that it has is on the bottom of these stepper motors, the shaft goes all the way through the motor into the bottom. There's pulleys on the bottom, which I'm not sure if you can see it here. There you go. There's pulleys on the bottom, so the Z stay perfectly in line. And if you need to raise a gantry manually, you can simply grab the belt, turn the belt, and slowly, you know, lift the gantry up as needed. But that's a real nice feature, having those kept perfectly in line. It's got a linear rail. For the X going back and forth, which is very nice, very smooth. It's got smooth rods. That way you don't have to mess with those uh, um, B-slot rollers and eccentric nuts. All that's done away with. Very nice option. It has handles on the top if you wish to carry it. One on both sides there. It has a robin board in it. The control board is a robin board. It has a Meanwell power supply, as you can see in there. Genuine Meanwhile power supply. They're very good power supplies. Little information tag on the back. Let's see. It has four adjustable feet underneath it. There is a small nut, so you can adjust the height. Just unscrew it, and you can set the nut whatever height you want if you want to adjust it. Limit switch is here in the front. And there's one over here also. The build volume, as I mentioned, is 330 by 330. 
by 230, excuse me, it's 300 by 300 by 230. Now, my CR-10s, when I first got into printing, were 300 by 300 by 400. It would have been so awesome if this would have been, you know, 400 millimeters tall, but it's not. It's only 230, but, you know, oh well, it is what it is. It has a, what appears to be a BL Touch hot end, a direct drive extruder, and as you're feeding filament, or as it's running, you can manually feed filament by simply turning the knob. And while it's running, it also uh, rotates and feeds. It has a power resume option. If your power should go off for a reasonable amount of time, it will uh, turn, a, turn a printer back on. You can resume the print. It has Wi-Fi connectivity, but I haven't checked it out yet. I haven't experimented with it. I'm still working on getting my uh, first layer all set up. I'm trying to get it tuned in. Now, this mark on the build plate right here, the circle, that was there when I got the printer from the previous owner. And I was having a little trouble yesterday on one of my prints getting the first layer just right. So I put some nanopolymer adhesive on it, and I went over the bed. But yeah, it's a very well-built machine, very well-constructed. Um... Things I would have done different on it, I probably would have put an LED light strip underneath here. That would have been a nice feature. The BL Touch does light up a little bit, but you can't see the print real well if it's in the dark. But a, a light LED light strip would have been a very nice feature to have on it. But yeah, it, basically I've had no real issues with it other than a few things I had to replace. Like I said, the plumb coupler here, which is sprung. Place that. And then the uh, thermistor on the hot end. I had to replace that also. That's the one that was on it. It's kind of dead. So let's uh, go over and let's check them out online and uh, see what else I can I think to say that I haven't you know thought up off the top of my head. Okay, here's Kai Wu, 3D's official website. Just scrolling down through here, see what all they got. And that's at kaiwu3d.com. They've got different printing accessories, different printers, features. And I see they've upgraded their uh, filament sensor. They're, they've upgraded their... Uh, Filament holder on top, mine is metal with a plastic uh, holder for the spool. And that's how I just turn it sideways right there. And you just plug everything up and you're ready to go that quick. And there's the wheels I was talking about. You can adjust them whatever height you want. But yeah, it's a cool looking machine. I like the color. I like the design. It's something different. And it's like I say, it's got a lot of bells and whistles. Let's go over and uh, check, out, check them out over here on uh, Facebook, in the Facebook group. In fact, they got a big event coming up here really soon on July 29th. And here they are over on Facebook. And their official store on AliExpress. And there's a picture of the HD touchscreen, the old UI, what it looked like. Everything was all yellow, so now it's very colorful, and they've upgraded it and changed it. But like I said, I need to go through it and see what all has been changed on it, what's different. Oh, there's a light bar right there you can buy. Okay. Nice.
Lots of goodies. Let's check them out on Amazon in the USA. Got them right here. I'll have links to all this below in the description. But yeah, it's a very solid frame. Uh, it's got the dual card slot, which is nice. The linear rail, which is really cool. None of my printers have linear rails. Um, the smooth rods I do have on my uh, Prusa Mini. So that's a real nice feature on this. There's, you don't have to worry about leveling the bed with the knobs anymore and the V-slot wheels and eccentric nuts. They just all that's, you know, that's irrelevant here. And resume printing is a nice feature, but where I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, here in the USA, I don't have power issues. And I have UPS backup, so if my power should ever blink, it, uh, my UPS will take care of it. So, very cool. Let's get back to the printer. Check out the quality of these prints here. I was reading online on one of their, on their website. Uh, they had some recommended settings for Cura. So I went in, I tweaked a few things, and I printed out the cube. And then I went over to Prusa Slicer, and I sliced this in Prusa Slicer. I just picked an Ender 3, and I changed the build size. And I have a, it's a base, and I have a little stringy here and there on this PLA. This is from Ziltec. Real pretty color here. And then I also went back to the website again, and I found an FFF profile that I imported into S3D. And this Prusa filament here, I went ahead and sliced this with Simplified 3D, and the bench came out really nice. So, it's not perfect, but, you know, they never are perfect, but no real issues. came out really good. So, and like I said, there'll be links to the description where you can find these models. Links to uh, Kaiwu 3D on AliExpress, Amazon their main company, their Facebook group. Everything will be below in the description. So, yeah, I'm very, so far, I'm very happy with it. And I'll be doing more videos on it and uh, just keep moving on forward. So, very cool. Yeah, one idea I had when I started this video, I was going to have this up on my shoulder like it was really, it was heavy, and then I was going to slip or drop it and let it go crash into the floor and everybody could temporarily go, oh, no! <laughs> but I didn't do it, so... And I did originally take the unboxing this and putting it together, and then I realized that it wasn't in perfect condition like you would get it from the manufacturer when you first bought it. So it's like, why unbox it? This is going to be totally different than what the average user is going to get. So like I said, I simply put it together, and then I can, you know, go from there with the video. Um, like I say, and then when you go to assemble this, when you go to put the, build, the bed on it, like you might have seen in the video there real quick, you simply turn the machine on end, Lay it over on the side, completely down. You take the bed, stick it in, you put on the four bolts and hook up the four connections and then set it up right and plug it in, you're good to go. Just be sure you check your power for your region, wherever you live at. But yeah, uh, a cool little machine. Like I say, I have no issues with it yet. I'm checking everything out. They just updated the firmware for it, I believe. Today they released it. And I have to figure out how to work with the Wi-Fi and how to properly probe the bed with the BL Touch. I've been using TH3D Easy ABLs for years, and I got those all figured out, but the BL Touch is kind of a new thing for me. On my Creality CR10 Max, I have a BL Touch, and I'm still, you know, figuring all that out. But their web, if you don't, and if it doesn't explain it in the paperwork, their website has all the information you need. You can email them, contact them. They've been really good at getting right back with me about any questions I had or any information. So. Please like, subscribe, share this video. I really appreciate everybody, and happy printing. Thank you.